Hello and welcome to Behind the Music Vienna. In this trip I'm going to show you some very interesting places where history was made. We're going to be taking a look at Mozart's house where he spent his uh, infant years as well as Beethoven's grave and some other special places here in, in Austria. So stick around, this is going to be an interesting thing to see. For many centuries, Vienna was the place that would offer an excellent and money-making environment for musicians and artists. Many great composers were attracted to the city. They came, they stayed, and wrote magnificent music. A couple of them to mention are Beethoven, Mozart, Haydn, and Johann Strauss. And this is just a small number of all the composers that came and became famous while they're staying here in Vienna. Currently, I'm in the Museum of History of Vienna, and let me tell you, there is a lot of really wonderful stuff in here that you're gonna see. The museum is home to world-famous and unique objects, and enormous dinosaur skeletons, as well as the permanent anthropological exhibition on the origins and development of humans. The museum's departments are home to around 60 scientists carrying out fundamental research in a wide range of fields related to earth science, life sciences, and human sciences. This makes the museum an important public institution and one of the largest non-university research centers in Austria. dinosaurs from Jurassic Park. I'm still going. I'm still going. I'm still walking. I guess I have to take a trip down memory lane and just be in fashion just like these guys are showing over here. So I'm gonna try it. What do you think, huh? Trendy. Not bad. What you have behind me is the entrance of the official apartment of Sigmund Freud, one of the most famous psychologists or psychologists of the time. And this was his apartment all the way up until 1938. Known as the founding father of psychoanalysis, Sigmund Freud lived in this apartment for almost half a century, from 1891 to 1938. Freud was forced to leave this apartment in 1938 after Austria was invaded by Nazi Germany. He then spent the last year of his life in England. This former apartment, which is now a museum, was opened in 1971 with the help of Anna Freud, the youngest daughter of Sigmund Freud. And this museum right now shows original furniture, including the waiting room, and a selection from Freud's private collection of antiques, autographs, and first editions of his works. It also provides an insight into Freud's biography, his cultural surroundings, and the emergence of psychoanalysis.
Well, this is as close as I'm gonna get to Ludwig van Beethoven. This is his actual grave here in Vienna. Beethoven was born in December 1770 in Bonn, Germany, and he died in March 26, 1827, in Vienna, Austria. Beethoven started to go deaf around 1796, when he was just about 25 years old. And it's a wonder that he managed to write any music at all. He communicated using conversation books, asking his friends to write down what they wanted to say so he could respond. Beethoven admired the ideas of the French Revolution, so he dedicated his third symphony to Napoleon Bonaparte. Until Napoleon declared himself emperor, and Beethoven got so mad that he ripped the front page from his manuscript and scrubbed out Napoleon's name. Beethoven wrote about nine symphonies before dying in 1827. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was born on January 27, 1756 in Salzburg, Austria, and died on December 5, 1791 in Vienna, Austria. He was one of the greatest composers of the classical period. By the age of six, he was writing his own compositions. He wrote his first opera when he was only 14 years old, and when he was 17, he received an appointment to play in the court of Vienna. Mozart made a substantial amount of money from his operas, but he also lost spending, so he ended up in financial difficulties. He died in 1791 of kidney failure, and he was buried in a common grave with little family. I am standing right now in front of Mozart House, Vienna, and this is one of the apartments where Mozart lived uh, several years during the 1700s. Check this out. Even though Mozart lived in different addresses around Vienna, this apartment is the only one that has survived to this day. He lived in this address from 1784 to 1787. It was here where Mozart created his best compositions, including what is now known as his most popular opera, The Marriage of Figaro. We're on our way to Mozart's birthplace. This is where he was born and spent his early years learning to play the harpsichord. Mozart and his family moved into this apartment in 1773. And Mozart lived in this apartment until he moved to Vienna in 1781. This apartment was destroyed in October 16, 1944 in an air raid during World War II and years later, it was bought by the Mozart Foundation and turned into the museum that it is right now. This is how tall Mozart was supposed to be. I feel like a giant. Johann Strauss wrote more than 400 waltzes and other dance tunes. He was known as the Waltz King. Some of Johann Strauss' famous works include the Blue Danube, 
and tales from the Vienna woods, among others. So I'm here in Stadt Park, and we are going to take a look at the statue of Johann Strauss, the father of vaults here in Vienna. Start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. When you read, you begin with A, B, C. When you sing, you begin with Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. The movie The Sound of Music was the third highest grossing movie of all time. It was released in 1965. And even though it was based on a true story, there were plenty of differences between the movie and the real story. For example, there were 10 Von Trapp children, not 7. The real Maria left the convent to tutor one child, not to be the governess of all 7 children. Maria and Captain Von Trapp were married for 11 years before the Nazis took over Austria. And contrary to what the movie shows, Captain was a very kind man, not the harsh person that was shown in the movie. The Von Trapp family did escape Austria as the Nazis came to power, but they didn't flee over the Alps. They got into a train to Italy and then traveled to America, where they had a concert tour scheduled. The day after they left, Hitler ordered the Austrian burghers shot. A visit to Vienna, Austria will not be complete if you don't get to the Schönbrunn Palace. As you can see here on the back, it is one of the biggest palaces here in Vienna. Schönbrunn Palace is a former imperial summer residence located in Vienna, Austria. It is one of the most important architectural, cultural and historical monuments in the country. It is one of Europe's most impressive Baroque palace complexes. This palace has a total of 1,441 rooms. And when this beautiful view that we have behind me of the big city of Vienna, Austria, we say goodbye and we hope you enjoyed this little video that I made for you guys. And I say goodbye from Vienna, Austria and see you later.